Good evening, and welcome to the 2020 award ceremony. Please stand and remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For as long as we've been having an awards ceremony, it has always started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Other than kicking this ceremony off the same way we always have, this year's ceremony will be di very different from all of the others that have come before it. At the beginning of this year, none of us could have imagined how much the world would change in only a few short months. Although we are live streaming this awards ceremony, it does not diminish the tremendous accomplishments of our students. Our students have responded so positively to all of the changes thrown at them since March. Over the past few months, I've often wondered how our students will reflect on this particular time in their lives. How will it impact their understanding of the world and what meaning will they make of it? In almost all cases, the awards that are being handed out this evening are for work and accomplishments that happened prior to the pandemic. In one way, these awards remind us of a simpler time where we could count on school starting at 7.45 a.m. and ending at 2.25 p.m. Lunch was a short 26 minutes and the panini line was long. Extracurriculars would keep the building busy until all hours of the night and students went to bed before midnight. These awards tonight will mark a boundary between the time when school was normal to our reality today. I would also like to suggest that it is a good time for our students to think about the shift that they may, may need to make in this new reality. How will their success be determined from here on out? Although there are many challenges that lie ahead, it is an exciting time. Years from now, our students will look back on this time and these awards will be seen as the end of the way they were or the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. Now, normally our students are seated on the high school stage in their formal attire. Tonight, they are gathered with their families in their homes, hopefully wearing much more comfortable clothes. This has been an incredible year for our students on so many different levels. Many of them were celebrated not only locally, but at the state and national levels. Their accomplishments were recognized by organizations such as National Merit, Section 1 Athletics, New York State Athletics, Con Edison, Regeneron, College Board, NISMA, and countless other local, state, and national organizations. They were celebrated for their work in and out of the classrooms, both at school and on the road. I want to thank Stacy Ferrante and Margarita Nordstrom of the Guidance Department for their organization and planning of tonight's event. Thank you also to Mr. Brian Melso and Elise Trainer of the Media Center for producing this evening's event. Thank you as well to Ms. Christina Wilson. I also wanted to acknowledge Dr. Mike McGrath, who officially retired on May 8th. For 12 years, Dr. McGrath dedicated himself to the students of Byram Hills High School and to his department as well. We thank him for all that he has done to support Byron Mills, and we will miss him dearly. Congratulations, Dr. McGrath, and have a wonderful retirement. Finally, thank you to all the parents and family members watching from their homes this evening. None of our students would have been able to make it to this point without you. Thank you for the hours upon hours of support that enabled them to achieve so much. This award ceremony is as much for you as it is for them. And just in case they don't say it, I will say it for all of them. Thank you, mom, dad, aunts, uncles, grandma, and grandpa, brothers and sisters. I will now turn it over for our first award of the night, the J.B. Testa Onward and Upward Scholarship Award, which will be presented by my dear colleague, Mr. Greg Carrillo. The Jamie Testa Onward and Upward Scholarship is given to a senior 
who shows exemplary commitment to helping others and dedication to public service. This year's recipient is committed to improving the world around her. Energized by her study of solar energy in Global Scholars, this student has presented her work in front of the Byram Hills Board of Education. This student's service-oriented mindset has been evident through her long-term volunteer work with Heifer International, Hope Store, Hope for Heroes, Hype, and Students Serving Soldiers. Additionally, she volunteers at a children's bereavement group and at a Sunday school and at Sunday school classes. Somehow she finds the time to excel both athletically and academically. Always a steady optimist with a service first mentality. This year's recipient of the Jamie Testa Onward and Upward Scholarship is Caroline Kelly. The North Castle Police Benevolent Association Scholarship is presented to a senior who has shown academic excellence and a commitment to the North Castle community. This year's recipient is known for his affable nature and is held in the highest regard by his peers and the Byram Health community. A highly successful science research student, he was one of only 300 science research students nationwide to earn the distinction of being a Regeneron Scholar. He is also an outstanding and unique contributor to the varsity baseball team, where his uncanny ability to plug into almost any fielding position is the perfect metaphor for his all around outstanding academic ability. An unofficial tutor for many of his friends, this student is always there to assist others. Highly committed to his community, a true gentleman and natural leader, the recipient of this year's PBA scholarship is Spencer Karp. The recipient of the Armonk Chamber of Commerce Excellent in Business Award is an amazing young man. He brims with industrious energy, enthusiasm for learning, and a powerful entrepreneurial drive. As early as ninth grade, this year's recipient began a small manufacturing business for hand toys and generated $10,000 in revenue. Since then, he has pursued several other business ideas, one of which has a patent pending. Instead of thinking about the next big thing, he pays close attention to his environment and his own life experiences, and it is from daily life from the ground up that he draws his greatest inspiration. It is my pleasure to present the R. Monk Chamber of Commerce Excellence in Business Award to Brian Roden. Hello, I'm Colleen O'Connor, one of the assistant principals at the high school, and I am presenting the 2020 New York State Student Comptroller Student Achievement Award. This award is presented to two seniors for demonstrating academic achievement and outstanding community service. The first of these recipients is a curious and bright young man who has taken our most rigorous courses at Byram, including science research, was named one of the top scholars for the Regeneron Science Talent Search, is the head of the Science Enrichment Program at Learning Links, and the co-president of the Second Grade Science Club, and most importantly, is a compassionate individual who is committed to making the world a better place. Congratulations to Sam Aberman. The second recipient of this award is a diligent and creative young woman who has also taken our most challenging courses at Byram, who was awarded the People's Choice I Create Award for her artwork, was a senior mentor, the school liaison for the Armonk Outdoor Art Show, and a member of the volleyball team, and is a kind, creative, and caring role model for other students in our school. Congratulations to Madison Fang. The Congresswoman Nita Lowy Community Service Award is given to a senior who has demonstrated outstanding and invaluable service to the community. This year's recipient is a gifted self-starter and the rare three-sport varsity athlete. Her athletic mentality carries over from the field to the classroom. In science research, she has excelled and placed in regional science competitions and completed her research at the UPenn Medical School. She founded an Instagram community, Blood Sugar Cookies, which has grown to nearly 10,000 followers who benefit from content that builds awareness and supports type 1 diabetes individuals. A peer tutor and chem TA, this year's recipient is a natural teacher planning a STEM career path. Congratulations to the recipient of this year's Nita Lowy Congresswoman Award, Senior Sarah Alani. 
Each year, the counseling department presents college and university book awards to distinguished juniors. Tonight, the department will grant awards to students who have earned exceptionally high grade point averages, demonstrated leadership skills, and dedicated time to their school, local, and global community. I will now present the first award. This year's recipient of the George Washington University Book Award is a dedicated student who demonstrates excellence in all areas of her life. She is a true intellectual with a passion for math, science, and technology, and she is driven by a desire to seek solutions to real-world challenges. This year's recipient is also a varsity athlete, a math and Russian tutor, a member of our theater tech crew, and a member of our student athlete leadership team. She is an individual who each day enriches our school and community. It is a pleasure to present the George Washington Uni University Book Award to Katie Pedaljuk. The University of Virginia Book Award is presented this year to a young woman of remarkable achievement. She is a gifted science researcher who is striving for a deeper understanding and more effective interventions for individuals with autism spectrum disorder. This year's recipient is also a varsity athlete, a member of our Students Acting with Integrity team, and a tutor to young children at Neighbors Link. It is an honor to present this year's University of Virginia Jefferson Book Award to Elizabeth Manowitz. The recipient of the Smith College Book Award is a young woman of exceptional promise and academic scholarship. She is an emerging young author, a science researcher, a varsity athlete, and a natural leader. Through her work with the Great Activities Board demonstrates her investment in the health and success of our school community. I am proud to present this year's Smith College Book Award to Chloe Weissman. The Wellesley College Book Award is presented to a student of praiseworthy academic and musical accomplishment. This year's award winner has a passion for mathematics and computer science. She is co-captain of our Science Olympiad A team and a devoted member of our Wind Symphony. She excels on the debate team, teaches art to children, and has participated in competitive sailing for over six years. It is a privilege to present the Wellesley College Book Award to Allison Zhang. The first recipient of the Clarkson University Achievement and Leadership Award is a young woman of outstanding academic talent. This year's recipient is a dedicated science researcher who is studying the cutting edge development of biorobots. She is a varsity athlete and has brought her devotion to a sustainable environment down to the local level by co-founding the Students Advocating for the Environment Club. Always devoted to the support of others and willing to give generously of her time, she tutors young learners through the second grade club. It is a pleasure to present the Clarkson University Achievement Award to Tessa Schwartz. The second recipient of the Clarkson University Achievement and Leadership Award is presented to a junior whose level of respect for others, strong communication skills, and open-mindedness earned her, earned her a place on our Student Leadership Board. She has been an outstanding role model to those in our district as a peer tutor, and has also generously donated her time and skills at the Learning Links program in Mount Kisco. With a strong interest in political science and current events, this student has also contributed her writing as politics and advocacy correspondent for our online publication and has developed her own blog as well. This year's Clarkson University Leadership Award is presented to Ariel Scheinberg. The Harvard Prize Book Awards are given to outstanding juniors who display excellence in scholarship and high character. Our male recipient is not one to shy away from a challenge, whether it be in his choice of curriculum, out on the track, or in his extracurricular involvement. This past winter, he was recognized for his sportsmanship 
by his track coaches for supporting and encouraging an environment of camaraderie amongst his teammates. As a dedicated mem member of our Authentic Science Research Program, he was selected to serve on a five-person committee that organizes and coordinates the annual Authentic Science Research Symposium, and he personally leads a team of students handling all matters of press and publicity for the event. Our female recipient is also a superstar in the classroom and beyond. Due to her strong interest in the medical field, she was selected from our Authentic Science Research Program students to participate in a highly selective clinical tutorial program at the White Plains Hospital. She was awarded an all-league award for a Section 1 Athletics for her contribution to the relay team's first place win in the 4x400 race and was named MVP for the season. She has contributed her writing for every cycle of the Oracle since her freshman year and is a, a valued public forum debater for our debate team. This year's Harvard Prize Book Awards are presented to Luke Bryady and Olivia Cantor. The Brandeis Book Award is presented to a junior who demonstrates commitment to academics and service to their community. This year's recipient has demonstrated a love of learning and has embraced all opportunities to expand her knowledge, particularly in the areas of STEM. She is focused and dedicated to her studies, but remains remarkably humble when it comes to her achievements. She has been of service through her participation in height and as a volunteer at Learning Links in Mount Kiska. This student is also a member of her church youth group and volunteers her time at church. She has additionally participated in several projects to feed the homeless, fundraise for hurricane relief, and to help those less fortunate than herself. This year's Brandeis Book Award is presented to Kristen Eichelbeck. The University of Pennsylvania Book Award is given to a junior with outstanding character and high academic achievement who provides an important service to their school or community. This year's recipient is never one to be boastful or elitist, but rather extremely humble about her academic gifts and generous when it comes to helping others. Outside of the classroom, she has donated her time and talent as a tutor to those in need. She is a sought after peer tutor within our Byram Hills program and has also worked with students who are less fortunate and who have fewer resources in areas nearby. Her altruism is, has also compelled her to organize and run a clothing drive for the Gambia in her freshman year. After learning of children's need for clothing there, she leapt into action and ultimately sent barrels of clothing. This year's University of Pennsylvania Book Award is presented to Jordan Bernard. Dartmouth College Book Awards are awarded to juniors who exhibit excellent academic achievement and contribution to extracurricular activities. This year's male recipient is a student known for being a smiling optimist. He is highly respected, driven, and emotionally mature. With a smile on his face, he embraces authentic learning literally each and every day. This student had zero school day absences as a junior. In addition to his social emotional strengths and outstanding academic achievement, he has played the violin since the third grade, an instrument that requires great precision and concentration, the perfect metaphor for this student's personality and skills. Committed to learning and integrity, the recipient of the Dartmouth College Book Award is John D'Avanzo. This year's female recipient has demonstrated a highly impressive commitment to the study of mathematics, as evidenced by three summers at competitive math camps exploring graduate level topics, participation in the Princeton University National Math Competition, New York State Mathematical League competitions and multiple American Invitational Mathematical examinations where she scored in the top 2% nationally. When not engaged academically, this student excels in competitive dance, 
where she has achieved numerous first place finishes at regional and national competitions. Always committed to high achievement, the recipient of the Dartmouth College Book Award is Katherine Lynn. The Princeton University Book Award is presented to an academically outstanding junior who demonstrates intellectual leadership and strong character. This year's recipient spent the summer of 2019 engaged in science research at the UPenn Heller Laboratory of Neuroepigenetics, and she is now remotely assisting in the writing of grant applications for this very lab. This student has studied the French language in Paris, gene expression with the University of Melbourne and shark studies with Lesley University in Fiji. No stranger to the ocean, this student is also a certified master's level scuba diver. Resilient, globally conscious, gentle, and possessing an unparalleled level of determination. The recipient of the Princeton University Book Award is Mia Dietrich. The Tulane University Book Award is awarded to a junior who embodies Tulane's motto, not for oneself, but for one's own, and is a true servant leader. This year's recipient is a student known for being a highly principled person of integrity. She has accumulated an incredible number of volunteer hours throughout high school, serving as a second grade Sunday school teaching assistant and a French and math tutor. She has been described as a creative thinker who reads and writes with great joy and passion. She has written her own novel and regularly publishes online. A fluent Greek speaker and award-winning French student, this student is committed to the joy of learning. The recipient of the Tulane University Book Award is Ellie Thadani. My name is Dwayne Smith, and I'm here to present awards on behalf of the English department. The Senior English Award recognizes two students whose exemplary performance in the study of literature underscores a deep appreciation for the written word. Our first recipient works diligently on her craft and reads voraciously. Her writing has a fluidity that cannot be taught. It is a joy to read her poems, short stories, and analytical work. Our first Senior English Award goes to Jordan Jacobson. Our next recipient has been described as having all the best characteristics of a model English student. She has a love for the written word and has always been an avid reader and writer, one whose work has evolved into thoughtful expressions of original ideas that reveal a sophisticated and sensitive mind. Our second Senior English Award goes to Allison Stillman. The Ed Walzer Writing Award was established by the family of Ed Walzer, a graduate of Byram Hills who went on to have a career as a writer. The family has asked that the English department present the award to aspiring writers. This year's recipient rejoices in storytelling. Her poems and stories create worlds unto themselves and are sometimes poignant, sometimes raw, and always beautiful. It is with great pride that I present this year's Ed Walzer Writing Award to Carolina Pedraza. Congratulations to all our recipients. Hi, this is Jen Layden here to present the Social Studies Awards. Our first award is the Social Science Award, which is given to a senior who has shown exceptional growth in the field of social studies. Our award winner is intellectually curious and always willing to go to the next level with her participation and her writing. This year, she took both AP European History and AP US Government and Politics. In Global Scholar, she pursued a multi-year research and action plan to address the problem of human trafficking. And she's earned the opportunity to continue that independent research with funding of a grant at Grinnell College. The Social Sciences Award winner is Madison Gummer. Congratulations, Maddie. Our second award is the North Castle Historical Society Award, which is given to a senior who has excelled in American history, European history, and other electives. Our award winner is described as quietly determined, internally motivated, humble in every way. She always looks inward for answers before looking outward to others. Incredibly bright and curious about the world and how to make it better. She possesses a keen understanding of history and makes phenomenal connections between the past and modern day. The North Castle Historical Society Award winner is Elena Lowe. Congratulations, Elena. 
Our third award is the History and Social Studies Department Award, which is presented to a senior who is an outstanding and serious history scholar. Our award winner embodies all the qualities of a serious history scholar. She shared with one of her teachers, I love public policy. I find it interesting and I want to be involved in shaping it. Not many 18 year olds feel that way and those that do tend to go on to great things. In this time of uncertainty, our world is in desperate need of smart, empathetic, action-oriented leaders, and we are certain our award winner will be at the forefront of tackling the challenges that lie ahead of us. The History and Social Studies Department Award winner is Allison Lehman. Congratulations, Allie. Our final award is the Lander Doris Fintz Watson Award for Historical Research, which honors North Castle's t late town historians, and the winner has an interest and passion in historical research in some form. Through her work in Global Scholars, our award winner has sustained in-depth research on participation of voters in American elections. Through her research, she identified key reasons why young people in particular are less likely to vote. She took clear action on the issue by advocating for a national holiday on Election Day through a letter writing campaign, and this year she organized a mock election for all seniors, which unfortunately had to be canceled due to our pandemic. The Landers Doris Fintz Watson Award for Historical Research also goes to Allison Lehman. Congratulations to Allie and to all the award winners. Thank you. My name is Lisa Pellegrino, the 612 Mathematics Chairperson, and I'm pleased to present our next set of awards. Since freshman year, this student has truly given the study of math the attention that it deserves. She understands and sees the beauty of math that can only be realized by delving deeply into her assignments, as she always has done. She reflects upon each problem she encounters in order to see the underlying connections to the larger subject that she always senses. Her love for the subject is a delight to those of us that have had the honor of being her teacher. I am pleased to present the award for Outstanding Senior to Elena Lowe. This next student is one that is always thinking deeply about the content before her, as well as its connections to other areas. During class, she always asks questions that signify true reflection on the subject while also demonstrating forward thinking. She always has a smile on her face, and while her aptitude for mathematics is obvious, it is also clear that her love of mathematics is deep-rooted and pure. I am pleased to present the award for Outstanding Junior to Catherine Petulik. This next award is given to a senior who has demonstrated exceptional qualities of a computer scientist. This year's recipient came into an AP computer science class with no background whatsoever, but quickly became a leader, always tackling the toughest assignments. She is eager to work with classmates and cooperatively solve different challenges and is always resourceful in seeking out resolutions or even just a better approach. I am pleased to present the Ken Hamilton Award to Allie Lehman. At this point, I would normally invite my colleague, Deb Kay, to join me, but she will instead join me virtually after this award. Each year, the Mathematics and Science Departments jointly choose a student to receive the Rensselaer Award. This medal is awarded by the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute to a junior who has displayed outstanding achievement in math and science, exhibits well-rounded interest and involvement in the community, and demonstrates adherence to rigorous academic standards. Once chosen, the recipient is eligible for a $25,000 scholarship per year at RPI. This year's recipient is one that goes above and beyond on all assignments. A motivated learner, he can frequently be found as a leader among students with his excellent problem-solving skills. Please join me in congratulating our medalist for the Rensselaer Award, Noam Malloy. Hello, I'm Deborah Kay, the science chairperson for grades six through 12. I'm presenting the next series of awards on behalf of the science department. The first science award is the Faraday Award, created in honor of Michael Faraday, who was thought to be one of the most influential scientists in history. It's presented to a senior who can manage long-term projects from inception to conclusion and create solutions in non-traditional ways. The recipient of the award is a young lady that began her high school career as an unassuming freshman that quietly completed her work. Though reserved, it was clear she never gave up, never backed down, and was an unyielding force to be reckoned with. This student has led the Enable Club for over two years. The Enable Club is made up of student engineers, 
and scientists that act as tinkerers, designers, dreamers, coders, makers, and everyday people that design assistive devices and improvement gadgets for youngsters in Blythdale Children's Hospital. Dr. Beacon describes this student as gentle with clear determination. She is capable of managing big projects with many moving parts. She leads teams of students, keeping them motivated and focused, even in the ever-changing landscape of after-school activities this year. Her skill of remaining flexible, humble, with a clear vision has out yielded outstanding results for her and positively influenced her classmates, her teachers, and the community of handicapped students that the Engineering Design Club has worked with. This aspiring engineered-minded scientist has an innate innovative ability to see the big picture and maintain attention to the slightest of details. She provides others with a blueprint for immediate success, as well as a desire to map out what has yet to be discovered. Please share my congratulations on recognizing the accomplishments of Elena Lowe as the recipient of the Faraday Award. The next award is the Byram Hills Excellence in Science Award presented to an outstanding senior science student. From the moment this young man stepped into Byram Hills High School, he has made himself known as a student leader in the science department. He intertwines his keen scientific mind, his effervescent personality to be thoughtful, approachable, and flexible. Be it as a chemistry TA or a science research student, he puts maximum dedication to the task at hand, and we are all to benefit from his efforts. Mr. Borneman describes him as the student, an exceptional scientific thinker and a great teacher. His demanding science course load, his science research success, and his reputation as a beloved chemistry TA speak volumes about him as a remarkable science student and a great person. Join me in congratulating this year's Byram Hills Award for Excellence in Science to Sam Aberman. The next award is the Bausch and Laum Award, Honorary Science Award. It is a prestigious award that goes to a junior who excels academically and who exemplifies the quintessential science student. The student recipient is described as diligent, conscientious, thoughtful, and a scientist who appreciates the attention to detail and strives to solve problems that will help mankind. Her chemistry teacher, Mr. Horowitz, described her as the closest thing to a perfect student one can find. She is diligent, thoughtful, immensely talented and passionate. Her keen mind and acquisitive nature will lead her to great things. By earning this award, the recipient also qualifies to apply for the Bausch and Lomb Scholarship at the University of Rochester. Because of her excellence in science and overall superior academic achievement, we present the Bausch and Lomb Honorary Science Award to Mia Dietrich. The Science Department next and final award is the Byram Hills Award for Potential in Science. This award is presented to an outstanding junior who demonstrates outstanding aptitude and achievement in science, coupled with potential for continued growth. The recipient is a model student that cherishes everything about science. She is a leader amongst her peers and is a role model for those around her. Katie strives to understand science at the conceptual level and inspires her peers to do the same. She not only excels in every aspect of her academics, but she has a true passion and appreciation for science. Comfortable in a laboratory setting, she possesses an inquisitive nature and keen attention to detail. In recognition of the above mentioned attributes, we present the Byram Hills Award for Potential in Science to Katie Petaluk. On behalf of the science department, I would like to congratulate all of these talented folks and wish them the best. Hello, I am Melissa Stahl and I'm the chair of the World Language Department. The World Language Awards honors the seniors that have demonstrated a superior command of the language. General Excellence in French. Our award winner for French has demonstrated consistent and exemplary effort and progress throughout her French career. She starts each class with a positive attitude and smile, eager to participate and collaborate with her peers. Her willingness to learn has led her to hone all of her productive and receptive skills related to the language. She is respectful and kind to other students, helping them where she can, fostering a community within the classroom focused on the language. It is my pleasure to congratulate Ariel Ragels with the 2019-2020 General Excellence in French Award. General Excellence in Italian. 
This year's recipient is a perfectionist and it's evident when looking at her approach to Italian. Her language production is founded in risk-taking and resiliency, and as a result, her Italian is near flawless. This recipient values peer collaboration and feedback in order to foster her reflective approach to language learning. This motivated young lady knows that community, leadership, and communication are fundamental to learning and engaging in today's world. I am pleased to be congratulating Callie Hoffman as the 2019-2020 General Excellence in Italian recipient. General Excellence in Spanish. This year's recipient is an outstanding Spanish language student who consistently demonstrates a high level of proficiency in his writing and speaking tasks. He's able to grasp difficult grammatical concepts with relative ease. He's always eager to initiate a conversation and to respond to thought-provoking questions in Spanish whilst demonstrating synthesis of grammatical skills and his sophisticated vocabulary. He truly exhibits a strong affinity and passion for the Spanish language. He's therefore well-deserving of the General Excellence in Spanish Award. Please join me in congratulating Mark Fackler. Dual Language Award. This award goes to a student that is simultaneously taking two upper-level languages. This year, the award goes to a student that has a strong command of the Spanish language and who understands and applies difficult grammatical ideas in her writing and speaking. In French, she has a special talent for understanding the language and does her best work consistently. Her teachers comment that she is a true role model for other students in that she's determined, resilient, and practiced with both of the languages. It is an honor to congratulate Madison Higgins with the Dual Language Award for 2019-2020. As the advisor of the Marketing and Media Club, I'm here to present an award to two deserving individuals who have shown great dedication to creating innovative content and marketing initiatives. Their commentary can be heard by thousands. Their video set an unprecedented standard of quality. They have been nominated as Bobcats of the Month, and tonight they're awarded the BHHS Marketing and Media Award. Congratulations to Jesse Schmalhaus and Matthew Levy. My name is Jane Carlin, and I'm here to talk about two extraordinary artists. The Byron Mills Art Award goes to a student who exemplifies all that we value in an art student. This student exhibited in the juried, nationally recognized Armagh Outdoor Art Show, and the Katona Museum of Art Young Artist Show. He was also accepted and exhibited in the Concordia Sponsored High School Art Show. This show was juried by art professionals and had students from over 30 schools participating. He won one of the seven awards of excellence and the president of the college wanted to buy his work. He will be attending the Rhode Island School of Design. I've been teaching for over 24 years and this student is one of the three students in all that time that has the artistic mindset, passion, and focus to create something extraordinary. I look forward to watching his career. He will be sorely missed. This year's winner of the Byron Hills Art Award is David Schwimmer. The Commitment to the Arts Award is given to a student who has taken a variety of art classes and works in multiple media. The award recipient was chosen to exhibit in the juried nationally recognized Armagh Outdoor Art Show and the Bruce Museum's I Create competition, in which she won the People's Choice Award. She also exhibited in the Katona Museum of Arts juried Young Artist Show. This student has very strong technical skills in graphic design, as well as multiple mediums in AP Studio Art. She will be attending Washington University in St. Louis in the fall and majoring in communication design. We were lucky to have her as a leader in the classroom. This award goes to Maddie Fang. Hello, Byram Hills. It's my pleasure to present the National School Orchestra Award. The National School Orchestra Award is given to a graduating senior or seniors who display outstanding merit and contribution to the success of the high school orchestra displaying a high degree of loyalty, cooperation, leadership, and passion toward the shared vision. This year, there are two recipients. Both students have shown great dedication and passion to the orchestral program all four years of their high school careers. They've also earned selection into the Westchester County Area Allstate Orchestra and the Triumph Music Honor Society. They understand the importance of creating community and inspiring the next generation of music students as ambassadors of the Byram Hills Orchestra Program. Congratulations to Christina Ferrari and Nick Skyra. 
Hi, I'm Alan Lounsbury, and I'm here to present the BHHS Band Awards. Our first award tonight is the Louis Armstrong Jazz Award. This award is presented to an outstanding jazz musician at BHHS. This year's recipient demonstrates a sincere love and appreciation of jazz through their performance, leadership, and improvisational skills, which are a core component of jazz music. Our recipient was also selected as a member of the Westchester County School Music Association's All-County Jazz Band. Please join me in congratulating this year's Louis Armstrong Jazz Award winner, Mark Fackler. Our final award tonight is the John Philip Sousa Award. John Philip Sousa Award recognizes superior musicianship and outstanding dedication to the high school band program. This year's recipient is a multifaceted musician who has contributed to the BHH band program in so many ways. As a soloist, an accompanist, a conductor, a composer, a leader, and finally, as an example of what musicianship should be. Please help me in recognizing this year's John Philip Sousa Award winner, Ethan Resnick. Congratulations to Mark Fackler and Ethan Resnick from the BHHS Bands. The PTSA Arts Scholarship is awarded to a senior who has been admitted to an arts program at a college or university and plans to pursue a career in the arts. This year's recipient has grown exponentially over the course of the four years we have known him. He has taken every music elective possible and has thrived in every capacity in the department. He has become the resident arranger at the high school, customizing pieces for concerts, cabarets, and studio music projects. He has performed in numerous theatrical productions and is a member of the orchestra, concert choir, and jazz choir. He is a true example of a selfless leader taking on projects with eager enthusiasm and an unwavering self-motivation. We could not thank him enough for his contribution to the music and theater department here at Byram Hills. He will be attending Clemson University in the fall to major in music and audio technology. It is with great pride that I present the PTSA Arts Scholarship Award to Emery Cohen. Each year, the National School Choral Award is given to one or two choristers for their outstanding contribution to the choral program. A description of the award reads as follows. In recognition of singular merit, ability, and achievement of outstanding contributions to the success of the school vocal program and an unusual degree of loyalty, cooperation, and high qualities of conduct, by the general consent of the music faculty, school officials, and others. Both of these seniors have earned numerous musical accolades. They each have been accepted into the All-State Choirs, received high NISMA honors, are members of the Triam Music Honor Society, and serve as section leaders in the concert choir. As four-year members of the chorus, they have served as leaders in helping build a thriving musical community at Byram Hills. It is with great pleasure that I present this year's National Choral Awards to Grace Bird and Jake Wild. Hello, Byron Hills. My name is Jim Gulick, and I'm the Assistant Director of the Varley Players, the theater program at Byron Hills High School. This evening, it is my pleasure to present the awards for outstanding career contribution to the theater program. This award is given to seniors who exemplify the qualities of leadership and dedication that we strive to develop within our students. After careful consideration, we chose four outstanding individuals who were with us for the long haul. Whether on the stage or behind the scenes, these students were always willing to say yes. We thank these four for tackling every job, every role, and every challenge with passion, grace, and skill, and for serving as wonderful role models to the people who follow behind them. Our first recipient went above and beyond any expectations, and not only helped provide the light for our performances, but for many other theater events as well. Congratulations to Zach Daniel. Our next recipient brought his enthusiasm and playful demeanor to each and every one of his roles, playing key characters and providing for some often needed comic relief. He was a company favorite. Congratulations to Alex Dempsey. Our next recipient also on the performance side, brought a positive attitude and willingness to jump in and help in any way she could. Her work ethic and constant presence made her a role model to many. Congratulations to Julia Levy. Our final recipient tonight was the glue to our construction and run crews. Not only was she always willing to do any job that needed to be done, but she kept everyone organized and was always looking out for her crewmates. 
I have already heard many of the crew members say it just won't be the same without her. Congratulations to Paige Sider. Thank you all for your years of dedication to our program and your fellow students. We miss you already. I'm Amy Menashe, advisor of the Arch Yearbook. The Yearbook Award goes to the senior who's made a significant contribution to the yearbook throughout high school. As a sophomore, this staff member could always be counted on to step up to any task. That year, she became the club section editor, which is a challenging undertaking. In 2019, she became the people section editor and spent many long hours as we were finishing our deadlines. This year, she was a senior section editor. Please join me in thanking and congratulating Isabel Nelson. Izzy, I wanted to give you this award when you were a sophomore. It's my pleasure to give it to you now. Hello, Byram Hills. This is Rob Castagna, the Director of Health, Physical Education, and Athletics. I am honored to be with you today to present four awards in the curriculum area of physical education. Our first recipient is Liam Caballero. Liam always brings positive energy to every activity in physical education. On his free periods, he will sometimes ask the teachers to join an additional class to spread even more positive energy. Our second recipient is Caroline Kelly. Caroline is a great athlete who tries hard in every unit and raises the level of play in the class. Her strong work ethic is contagious. Our third recipient is Carlos Toribio. Carlos is always willing to engage in a phys ed lesson and enjoys helping his peers to be successful. He always gives 100% effort, and by doing so, he delivers enthusiasm to everyone in the class. Anna Vitaj is our fourth recipient, and Anna gives serious and consistent effort in all units and does her best to excel. She is always interested in learning new material and accepting new challenges. Congratulations to all of the recipients today. It's always an honor to present the Vince Greco Award. Mr. Greco has attended each of the last 30 award ceremonies in person, and he assures me that he will be watching the live stream of this event tonight, so his streak will continue. For those of you who do not know him, Mr. Greco is a World War II veteran and an active member of the American Legion, as well as many other civic organizations. If we were together in the theater, I would ask you to join me in giving him a round of applause for his service to our country. But tonight, I will just let him know that the Byram Hills community thanks him from the bottom of our hearts. In addition to being a veteran, he's also a retired educator and a former Byram Hills board member. There is no bigger cheerleader for Byram Hills, and it is a true honor to present this award in his name. This award is presented to a graduating senior who has exhibited great resilience and has been a positive contributor to the Byram Hills High School community. The winner of the, the award this year is one of the most positive students I have encountered during my time at Byram Hills. He could always be found walking in the hallways or in the cafeteria with a huge smile on his face, offering kind greetings to everyone he met. When he first arrived at Byram Hills and he told me his story, I thought he was making it up. He had gone from the Dominican Republic to Spain to his second school in New York in less than a year without knowing how to speak a lick of English. With his mother in Spain and his father in New York City, he lived with his aunt and his uncle so that he could attend Byram Hills High School. He worked a full-time job after school and on the weekends to earn the money he needed to pay his bills, which included his rent. But he cherished the opportunities that he had while he was in the building. Like a sponge, he soaked up everything that Byram Hills had to offer. The thing that I admire most about this student is his sense of perspective. He certainly did not have many of the advantages that many of our students have had, but you would never know it by his outlook. 
He's always willing to lend a hand or help out another student in any way that he can. His teachers love his ability to bring his classmates together and his strong work ethic. This student proves that having grit, a strong work ethic, and resilience can be synonymous with joy. The Vince Greco Award for 2020 goes to Carlos Toribio. I'm pleased to present the Michelle Delamonico Scholarship Award. To have met Michelle even once was to know her for a lifetime. She was often referred to as the glue of the mathematics department, but truly she was the glue of Byram Hills. Whether it was her colleagues, administrators, students, or parents, whether at the high school, HCC, Wampus, or Coleman Hill, you could put Michelle anywhere and with anyone, and her resilience, love of learning, service to others, and most importantly, her sense of humor, or as Michelle would put it, get a chuckle out of something, would always shine through, through tough times as well as the good. Because to Michelle, they were almost always good. This scholarship is given to a student who personifies these qualities. This year's recipient, like Michelle, is hardworking, never complains, rolls with the punches, and always has a smile on her face. She is kind, she's caring, and always takes on challenges head on, just like Michelle. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Michelle Delmonico Scholarship Award to Nicole Giaccio. The PTSA Carullo Leadership Award of $1,000 is granted to a student that exhibits outstanding leadership, character, dedication, and humanity. This student is described by her teachers as an outstanding role model. She has a positive nature and untiring work ethic. She's a big sister and an accomplished cheerleader. It is a privilege to present this award to Allison Kaplan. Congratulations. The High Blatt Jack Wollenberg Memorial Award is our last award presented this evening. Every year, the school comes together to select the winner of this award. It is considered the highest honor for a graduating senior at Byram Hills High School. It is such a special award because the winner is selected by their classmates as well as the faculty and staff. It goes to the senior who has a humanitarian outlook a willingness to extend themselves for others, and an optimistic approach to life and its challenges. The award does not go to the senior with the highest grades, best extracurriculars, or most friends. It is intended to recognize a senior who is most respected and trusted, the one who classmates can count on in a time of need or trouble. This senior is the one who is most dedicated to his or her classmates and Byram Hills High School. The award honors two former educators here at Byram Hills High School who exhibited those same qualities. High Blatt was a school counselor and Jack Wollenberg was an English teacher. And both were student favorites while they were here. The, award, the winner of the award this year embodies all of the best of what it means to be a student at Byram Hills High School. I would like to share with you some of the comments his classmates used when they nominated him. He checks in with every single student, no matter who they are. He is the sweetest and most respectful human being. He makes himself available for anything and everyone. He is one of the most loyal people I know. He is a true leader in every sense of the word. A great motivator whose charisma and authenticity draws other students and staff to him. He is such a positive presence that he makes the most mundane things seem important and exciting. The teachers who nominated him echo their words. They say he deserves all the recognition he can get. Without a doubt, the most unselfish, admirable role model there is in our school. He is always there for his peers and has an unmatched level of gratitude. He's a true leader. When he speaks, everyone listens. And quite simply, this award was made for him. In addition to being a member of the Student Leadership Board, this student also served as a senior mentor this year. In what was a first for me as a principal, I received a call over the summer from a parent requesting that their child be placed with this student. 
Now, I have had requests from parents for their children to have certain teachers, but I have never had them place a special request for a senior mentor until this year. One of the last things I remember specifically about this student before we left school in March was watching him during the sectional basketball game versus Pearl River. Unfortunately, things were not going well for our team and we lost. However, never once during the game, no matter how it was going, did he lose sight of, of treating his teammates and the opposing players with mutual respect. Every person that hit the ground was offered his hand. Every good play was acknowledged with a pat on the back. Towards the end of the game, players from the opposing team were rushing over to offer their hand to him and joking with him during uh, free throws. Although he was understandably upset, he never lost sight of the value of being a genuinely good person. Now, it's easy to be a great teammate when things are going well. This player showed that it is more important to do it when things aren't going well. Earlier this year, he had to make a difficult choice to either continue playing with a string orchestra or to take an AP that he was interested in taking. Having the AP on his transcript would probably look better to colleges, but this decision came down to his loyalty. He could not bring himself to lead the other members of the orchestra after performing together for so many years. The chance at designing a transcript that might be more attractive to colleges was not as important as carrying on the bonds that he had formed with his fellow musicians. He absolutely personifies the best of Byram Hills. It is my great pleasure to present this year's Highblatt Jack Wollenberg Award to Nick Pika. There are a few traditions that go with this award. The PTSA offers a $1,000 scholarship to the recipient of this award. Nick will have his name placed on the perpetual plaque alongside the other winners of this award. The plaque is hung in the main entrance hallway and students pass it every day on their way into school. He will also be given, given $100 that he can choose to donate to a charity that he feels connected to. And the last tradition is that he will now get to give a speech. So I welcome to the virtual podium, Nick Pika. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for listening, first and foremost, and I'm so honored and grateful that I'm able to be, I don't know, in your living room or wherever you are right now on your on a screen to tell you how thankful I am for winning this award, that in the quarantine spirit, I had to go business casual, of course. First of all, I had to get through my cheesy thank yous. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single person at Byron Hills. Whether I know you by name or not, it doesn't make a difference because everybody here has had a major impact in my life, more so than I can ever imagine. Second, I had to say thank you to my closest friends and family, and I'm sure they're laughing at me right now, but I just needed to say thank you because you guys have had um, so much of an impact that I wouldn't be me without you guys, and, and that's true for a lot of people, so, so thank you to every single one. Finally, I'd like to give five specific thank yous. Uh, thank you to Lily, Kurt, Alberto, Alicio, and especially Clarence. And I don't know how they're gonna see this video or how they're gonna get my thanks, but if you do see them and happen to remember this, please just tell them I said thank you. Hopefully they know why, hopefully they remember a time that we were together, but, but just say thank you for me. Uh, so yeah. Winning this award is more than an honor. It's a responsibility. So much that I appreciate all of the congratulations and praise, but that's not what I need. What I ask truly is that this award be honored and remembered for years to come so that much better people than myself can get it. In 18 years, I've learned so much from the people around me. So much so that there's way too much to talk about, but <laughs> those stories are for when I'm 60, right? A lot of people tell me that you don't know what you have till it's gone. And although I do truly believe this, there's one thing I know I will always have. And that's the fact that family is and always will be family. 
And although I can bore you to death on this topic, um, there's only two points that I'd like to get across today. And first and foremost was taught to me when I was very little. And my parents did an incredible job on this one fact because it was pretty much our only rule. And that rule in the house from as far back as I can remember was no lying. And that went for both the kids and the parents. My parents, when they got divorced, right away told me how, why, when, um, what was going on and they just were so open about it and and it made trust so much less of a problem it made it so much easier to talk to them about everything and this this was able to to grow into so much more than I could ever imagine first of all it grew accountability it made sure we all took responsibility for whatever we did second it kind of showed me that that criticism isn't a bad thing and as long as you know the person opposite you criticizing you is being honest you know that they will be there when you do what they say so. And finally, it gave me uh, a higher sense of self. It gave me the ability to look in the mirror, honestly reflect on whatever I was doing wrong and change it. And again, that may go to like a perfectionist um, sense, but it showed me that, that I can beat the person across from me. Um, and then it just gave me a drive and, and, and grew from there. My next point uh, is kind of specific and it makes it that much more unique to me because I'm pretty sure that everybody watching this right now knows that I have a twin brother. Uh, his name's Cole and excuse me, it's, <clears throat> it's been, he's, <clears throat> I'm literally nothing without him at all. Um, I thought for like five to 10 minutes writing this about a metaphor, a simile, whatever I could do to compare um, all of the comfort, protectiveness, competition, and love that he has, and there's nothing like it. Um, William is one of a kind, as are you guys, but William is one of, one of a kind, and nothing will ever be able to sum up the words I have for him. I'm, tell I'm not telling you this so you guys can go, aw. I'm not telling you this to, to try and boost myself right now. I'm just sh telling you this because if you ever want to accomplish something in life, you have to know you're not alone. You have to know that there are people with you. And once you learn that, you know that how to look after someone. You know that, that competition isn't the worst thing in the world. You know that there, it's more important to be, felt, to be felt protected of than to be protected by. And of course, I gotta say it, he's still my little brother. Um, <laughs> so I'm sorry for all those who are still awake during this um, long speech. I just wanted to say uh, that I have tried to bring this to Byron Hills. And in everything you do, I made it my goal to associate that sense of family wherever I went. For every team I joined, for every classroom I stepped part of, I tried to make just two people closer. That was my one goal, two people. And then once that got going and people realized that even subconsciously, if they didn't know exactly what I was trying to do, once people realized that getting closer to someone and having someone behind you is better than having someone in front of you, it makes the team that much better. And it makes this community that much better. So I try my best to stay away from what was going on today, but that just wraps up so much. Today in quarantine, I was able to tell my mother I loved her. And, and having that family here with me, being able to spend that much time with, that, with my family today just opens my eyes on what could possibly happen and all the benefits that have come from quarantine. I know that everyone's hating what's going on and although everyone says they hate school, they wanna be back at school now because they wanna see their friends. No, just, just appreciate stuff. Just open your eyes and, and realize that there's still positives that have come from this. So for my closing statements, I challenge you to this one thing, to everyone listening. Right now, right as you listen to me here say this, go tell everyone in your family that you love them. Uh, maybe even a close friend or, or a teammate that you trust dearly. Tell them you love them and, and mean it because those words have so much more of an impact than you think. And those words can, can bring people far and wide closer closer than I can even tell you about. So becoming closer with your family in any way possible, 
so much that you're able to bring the feeling of love to someone you trust. And that makes the relationship that much stronger. Thank you.